Okay. So let us start. Mm. So last time, at the end of lecture, we discussed relativistic generation of the cross section. So we want to derive a relativistic generation of the cross section from some initial state to some final state. Okay, so initial state is denoted by up is denoted by alpha, the final state denoted by beta. So we will for most physical process, we will consider two particle scattering. So this is just two particles and then scatter, okay? So this is our initial state. Always only have two particles. But the final state can have arbitrary number of particles, okay? Can have uh, 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 arbitrary part, uh, number of particles. And then we define, so we require that the sigma alpha beta to be Lorentz invariant. Because, because the probability for, yeah, uh, uh, they should not depend on, say, say your frame. We also want to uh, 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 define to be sym symmetric in one to two, okay? So to make connection with the non-relativistic uh, non story, we can consider the rest frame, say, so as a starting point, we can consider the rest frame of particle two. Okay, you can always go to the rest frame of particle two. And then in that frame, then we can define this quantity to be the probability per unit time from alpha to beta dt, and then divided by the incident flux of particle one. Okay. So, yeah, so this d p alpha beta t is the probability, yeah, uh, let me just write it. So this is the probability per unit time for, for this process from alpha to beta, okay? And uh, then, and the dn1, dt, dA, would be the uh, incident flux of particle one, okay? So this expression is a lateral generalization to relativistic, context, uh, uh, to relativistic context, which in the rest frame of particle two, okay, in the rest frame of particle two. And so, so our strategy is to first work out this quantity in the rest frame of two, and then we, gen uh, and then we use the Lorentz, uh, uh, the requirement of the Lorentz invariant and the symmetric in one, two, to write it in the general frame. Okay, so that's our strategy, okay? And uh, so, um, so first let's talk about this quantity, this uh, probability from alpha to beta. So we have a uh, 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 so probability from alpha to beta. So can be, so by definition is defined as the following. Is we want to look at the tra transition amplitude, which, at, which give you the beta state at time plus infinity, and from alpha at time minus infinity. Okay, so this is the amplitude, and then we take the square, okay? And then we divide by the normalization of the beta itself and the alpha itself, okay? 
can be uh, divided by the normalization of the uh, uh, the beta and alpha, the states themselves. Okay, so that's the whole thing uh, uh, really uh, define the probability. So the upstairs, we already uh, uh, defined before. So so previously we defined the beta plus, yeah, uh, 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 infinity alpha minus infinity. So this is by our previous definition. It's given by two pi to the power of four delta p alpha p beta. So the p alpha p beta is the total momentum of the initial and final states, and the times m alpha beta. Okay, m alpha beta is defined to be the scattering amplitude from alpha to beta. Okay. Okay, so uh, so this is what we uh, uh, this was the, essentially our definition uh, 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 of the scattering amplitude. Yes. Is that in, in like space time or just time? Time, yeah. Time. Yeah, means that the, uh, 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 the t equal to minus infinity, yeah, so this is the Heisenberg state, okay? Uh, so this is in the Heisenberg picture. Uh, uh, so this means that at the t equal to minus infinity, uh, uh, we have a free particle state uh, described by alpha, and at the t equal to plus infinity, uh, we have free particle state uh, defined, uh, 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 given by beta. Other questions? Okay, so now let's take the square. Okay, now let's take the square. So, so remember, so the rhythm we need to put in downstairs, you say, why do we need to put it downstairs? Be, because are they supposed to be normalized? Okay, but in, uh, uh, in practice, when we do the calculation, Oh, uh, uh, in practice, when we talk about the partic free particles, we use the plane wave basis. Okay, but plane wave, remember, is not normalizable. Uh, it, it's only uh, uh, normalizable as a delta function. Okay, so so the normalization uh, uh, is not equal to one. Okay, it's actually, uh, so we have to be careful. Okay, so that's why we need to include them here. Okay. So um, yeah. Good. So now let's look at this quantity square. So let's just move it down. So uh, to save time, I just don't copy it. So this quantity square, then then you just equal to right hand side square. Okay. So we will have two pi for the delta function square, and then we have f of uh, m alpha beta square. Okay. And now let's look at the delta function square. So the delta function square, we have two pieces. So the uh, so so the delta function square. Okay, let me just save time. So this square, then we can take one piece, one copy of it. We, uh, we just write it as p alpha minus p beta, and then the other piece. Will be just delta four. We can just evaluate at zero, okay? Because because the uh, we already set uh, the p alpha equal to p beta uh, from the first delta function, okay? So the second uh, uh, factor can be just uh, become delta zero, okay? So now we know how to. So we have seen this before, right? So what is this object? Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, it's the total space-time volume. Okay, uh, uh, the reason is that the two pi delta four zero. So this is a zero in momentum space. Okay, so this is just equal to d four x expansion i k x divided by the k equal to zero. Okay, divided by the k equal to zero because this is give you the two pi delta k. And so you divide k zero. When you divide the k zero, then of course this is just the space-time volume. Okay, so I take the spatial volume to be b, and then this is t is the time uh, period. Okay, so um, so so physically, physically you can interpret the t as the duration 
uh, the time duration we actually do in the experiment, okay, because only that part is relevant uh, uh, for our uh, 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 for our experiment, okay. Uh, so this capital T can be interpreted, uh, um, yeah. Okay, good. And then now we can just replace here. So now we can just replace here by v times t, okay. Okay, we can just replace here by v times t. Okay. So, so now let's look at the downstairs. Okay, uh, now let's look at downstairs. So downstairs, so the alpha and the beta would be just say, uh, yeah, so the typical alpha, so the alpha state would be say, say if your initial momentum is P1 and the P2, okay, will be like this. For, uh, for scalar particle, just will be uh, specified by P1, P2. And if you have polarizations, then there will be, uh, be polarizations. Okay, uh, uh, here I just give you an example. So now if you look at the normalization of this kind of state, okay, remember the P1 and P2 defined. So remember if you have a single particle state of momentum P, so that is normalized to be two pi cube, two P zero, delta three, P minus P prime. Okay, because they're always on shell. Okay, initial and final state, they're on shell. So P zero uh, are functions of P, okay? So that's how, uh, yeah, we normalize them. So P is normalized by square root omega k, uh, omega p, say a p acting on zero, okay? Uh, and for example, for scalar particle, and then you look at the normalization just like this, okay? So now if you look at the p with itself, okay, and then you have p equal to p prime, and then you have, the, essentially you just have q, P zero times V. Okay, the V is the spatial volume. Because here you just have two pi cube, uh, the delta zero, and delta zero is in the spatial uh, momentum. Okay, and spatial momentum, uh, for the same reason, uh, 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 just gave you the spatial volume. Okay. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And so now we can just apply this to, uh, to alpha and beta. So the alpha, so if I take the alpha to have momentum P1, P2, to consist particle momentum P1, P2, and beta, to consist of momentum, say, K1 and the Kn, suppose they are n particles, okay, so n can be arbitrary integers. And then, then from here, then, then the alpha, which itself, would be just 2E1, times volume and 2E2 times volume. Okay, E1 and E2 are the energy of the P1 and P2. Okay? Uh, um, yeah, so E1 is equal to P1, zero. Okay, and E2 to P2, zero. And similarly, the beta would be the take the product j from one to n, two kj, zeros component, times v, okay? Okay, so, um, and so, so, so the k zero, kj zero, yeah, for example, just kj zero, just equal to, kj square plus mj square. Okay, so so a different so here we allow the different particle to have different mass. Okay, and uh, yeah, similarly with p one zero and and p two. Okay, so now with those preparations, now we can uh, write down dpt. So now the dp alpha to beta 
dt, then essentially just equal to p alpha beta divided by t, the total duration of your uh, 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 the physical process. And so the reason they just related, you say, how, uh, how can you do this? OK, uh, 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 this is a differential. And how can you just divide it by the t? Uh, 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 do you know a reason why we can just divide by this? Yes? Uh, it's just because of, yeah, yeah, that's a good statement. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, but the statement I was uh, 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 wanted to you say is that the, uh, because of the time translation symmetry, and uh, so, so you would expect that the probability per unit time should be independent of time. And so the probability, say, for duration of time, and you can just multiply by the total time. And indeed, in order to make this equation make sense, of course, the p have to be small, because otherwise, the, uh, if you multiply, yeah, uh, uh, this thing has to be small. Otherwise, when you multiply by t, of course, it will be greater than 1. OK, yeah, but, uh, but just to divide by t uh, is from the time translation symmetry. OK, okay so, so this is good, because we know here, from the delta function, there's a factor of t. OK, there's a factor of t. So if we combine everything together, so if we combine everything together, and then we can just, then the upstairs is given by, so we have the 2 pi power 4, delta 4, p alpha, p beta, then m alpha 2 beta square times vt. And when I divide by t, and then this t go away, OK, so I, I can just erase this t. So this is upstairs, and then divided by t, uh, a capital T. And then the downstairs, we just copy these two expression. OK, downstairs, I, uh, I just copy this expression and this expression. OK, so, so this is the 4. E1, E2 times V square, and then J from 1 to N to K0, KJ0 times V. OK? Good? Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, no, it's not the detector. It's just uh, um, we're computing S matrix, right? So S matrix, you always uh, assume you wait for a long time so that your initial state is free and your final state is free. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, of course, it's much not. Uh, uh, it's the it, it, it's the range of your detector. Yeah. Yeah. You have to put the detector very far away in order to yeah measure the particle. Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine the V just essentially is the is the volume which the 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 the, the experiment is happening. Yeah. Other questions? Good. So you see, there's all this V flying around. Okay, so so they look very unpleasant, but but don't worry. Later, if you are doing the right thing, then all these unpleasant things will go away. OK, so, uh, so that's the rule of physics. And uh, in the intermediate step, you may see a lot of unpleasant things. But if you are doing the right thing, OK, and then all these unpleasant things will go away. Or say you say, oh, then I must be doing the right thing. OK, so, so here, actually, this probability is not the probability we actually measure. Because here, I assume that, that the final state here, I assume the final state. Um, yeah, here I assume the final state have precise momentum k1, kn. OK? So in reality, of course, we will not be able to make in the precise measurements. 
Okay, so, so in real experiment, we always, uh, detectors have some finite extension, uh, uh, have finite uh, uh, detectors, have finite resolutions, So, so what we measure is actually when we say the particle, say have momentum k1, we actually means that the particle one is within some dk one around a1, uh, around k1, okay? So there's always some finite neighborhood of k1 which are allowed by the uh, by a detector uh, 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 resolution. And similarly, in reality, it's particle two in dk2 around k2, et cetera. Okay, so the particle n, dkn around kn. So then we actually need to uh, integrate over all uh, 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 all these uh, 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 resolutions, okay? So that means that we should multiply this dpt, okay, this corresponding to, to sharp uh, final momentum, okay, sharp final momentum, uh, 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 and we should uh, uh, multiply by those uncertainties, okay? So that means that the, um, say if I take this equation to be star, this equation to be star, so the one actually is measured by the experiment when we say t alpha beta dt from the real experiment is actually corresponding to the star times, okay, uh, uh, the, so, uh, uh, those uncertainties around the, uh, 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 so, so j equal to one to n d three k j, two pi cube. Okay, so we need to multiply the number of states, okay? The number of states within each this uh, 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 dk uh, momentum space volume, okay? Uh, so the number of the state. And the number of state is given by this times the volume, okay? So do you remember? Uh, do you remember where this volume come from? Yes. Like the density states. Exactly. So this gives you the density of state. It's because of the. So if I just remind you, remember if you. So the way to think about it, just imagine you put your, uh, 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 put your, uh, um, put your system in the box. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then your, uh, your energy level will be quantized in terms of two pi, say two pi cube divided by the volume. Okay, so, so this is the number of states in momentum space, uh, 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 the density of states, and then you multiply by that decay, okay? And you multiply that decay. Good? Okay, so, so this is actually the quantity we are interested in. Okay, this is a quantity we're interested in. Any questions on this? So now, so now let's just plug, the, uh, pr plug in that star into here. Okay, so now the nice thing, now we can count the number of Vs. Okay, if we are doing the right thing, all the V should cancel, okay? Except, uh, uh, yeah but not quite yet, okay. Uh, so, 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 uh, so upstairs we have one V, here we have V square, so, so let's first cancel this V so that we uh, don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's first cancel that V. And now we have, downstairs we have V for each J, and the upstairs now we multiply this by this, and then for each J have one V. So all this V will cancel that V, Okay, all this V will cancel that V. So we left with only this single V, okay? This single V. So, so now we can write it the following. 
So I can write it this f m alpha beta square. So I just copy this. And then I divide it by, uh, 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 let's keep this, divided by 4e1 e2 times v. And then I group everything else into uh, what I call d mu, OK? And d mu is everything else. d mu is defined to be uh, this delta function. And then j from 1 to n, d3k j, 2 pi cube, 2 k j 0. OK, so I just combined these two product, OK? Combine these two product, OK? So the nice thing, the reason I group all this together, because now the mu, Now it's Lorentz invariant. OK, so this is a Lorentz invariant uh, measure. Because you remember, this is Lorentz invariant. And remember, this combination is also Lorentz invariant uh, from your first day, uh, 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 essentially in QFT. OK, uh, in your first P set, you were, yeah. So, so, so now this nice thing is that this now is a Lorentz invariant. Okay. So now we have this nice expression. OK, we have this nice expression. We have this by definition is no rent invariant. And then we have this 4e1, e2, and times v. OK, uh, 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 4e1 times v. OK, and now we want to write them into a low rent invariant way. OK. But we haven't done it. This is only upstairs. Uh, 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 this by itself is not Lorentz invariant. We have to divide it by the downstairs. So the downstairs is the uh, the flux. Okay, uh, is the flux. So now in the rest frame, of particle two. So let's calculate the uh, the flux of the particle. So the so the flux of the particle. Okay, uh, uh, so the flux. So we need to calculate the flux of particle one. So so that's the thing we need to divide. The, yeah. So uh, so this is the flux of the particle one. Okay. So that flux is the number number of particle per unit time and per area. OK, uh, uh, per unit time, per area. So this is the same as the number of the particle, number density of the particle one times the velocity of the particle one. OK? So remember, uh, the flux is essentially the density times the velocity, OK? So this gives you the number of particle per, per volume. And this is giving you the uh, uh, the distance traveled per unit time, and uh, yeah, so together they uh, they give you that. Okay. And so yeah, so 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 this is the velocity. So this is the density of particle one. So this is all in the rest frame of particle two. Okay. So now in this experiment, we have two particle scattering. So what do you think will be the density of one? So what do you think is the N1? Yes? Exactly, how many particles do we have? We only have one particle. <laughs> so, so this is just given by one over V, okay? So this is just given by one over V. So, so, so now we can find the d sigma. Okay, so the d sigma alpha to beta then is defined to be dp 
dt, okay, not defi uh, divided by the flux of one, particle one, okay? So, so now this is just given by, now the volume cancel, okay? Because M1 is one over volume, and then there's a volume here, and now finally this volume cancel, okay? So now if we divide that by, by the flux and the volume cancel, and then we get M alpha beta square d mu, and then divided by E1, E2, and V1. Okay, the velocity of the, uh, 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 the, uh, the particle one. Okay, so this is the, uh, so V1 of course can also be interpreted as a, vo a relative velocity between one and two, okay? Anyway, uh, 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 so this is the expression we uh, uh, find. So this is the expression in the rest frame of particle two, okay? So by definition, so by definition, we want this thing to be Lorentz invariant and symmetric in one and two, yes? Yeah. Is like another way to interpret it, like you think of instead of a plane wave, like a narrow wave packet or something centered at like centered at K one. Yeah. Do you get like a V from the wave packet to like fix it? Is that what you meant? Is that like is that valid? Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's the similar uh it's the similar idea. Yeah. Because of the let me see, um Yeah, yeah, because essentially you get rid of that V. Yeah, when you consider the wave packet, then you get uh, then you get rid of then you get rid of this v, yeah, and then and then you also get rid of this v, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you just get rid of the v one upstairs, one downstairs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good. So so now we want to write this in the Lorentz invariant form. Uh, so so this is uh, uh, emphasized. This is in the rest frame of two. So now I look for object. So now I want to look for object which I will call it sigma. So sigma is Lorentz invariant. Yeah, sigma, yeah, uh, 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 let me write here. Sigma is Lorentz invariant. And the symmetric in one and the two and in the rest frame of two, then the sigma become this downstairs become this E1, E2 times V1, okay? So this is not the manifest uh, a Lorentz invariant object, okay? It's also not symmetric in one and two. But I should be able to find the object, sigma, that is by itself is Lorentz invariant, symmetric in one and two, and in the rest frame of two, reduced to this object. Okay, if I can find this object, then I'm done. Okay, you find in finding the cr uh, cross section, yes. Uh, there should be a factor of four. Yeah, yeah, there should be. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, some other questions? Good. So I want to look for this object sigma, okay? And uh, so you can, yeah, you can uh, do a little bit trial and error to find such a sigma. <laughs> so I will just write down the answer for you, okay? And to save the trouble, uh, um, yeah. Uh, um, I could have put it in your p-set, but I decided not to do it. Uh, <laughs> so, so it turns out the sigma is given by, so uh, when you write down the answer, it's very simple. You can almost guess it, okay, uh, in the sense. So it's p1 dot p2 square minus m1 square times m2 square. Okay, m1, m2 are the, uh, are the uh, mass of the particle one, two, okay? So this object satisfies these three conditions. 
can this object satisfy these same conditions? Also, I will leave the exercise for yourself to check it. Okay, it's very easy to check it. So you just go to the right frame of Q, and then you can check this reduced to that. Okay. Good, so now we almost have our final answer for the cross section. So the D sigma for this 2 to n scattering. So now we just collect our final result. So we have the sigma alpha beta now is equal to m alpha beta square d mu divided by 4 sigma, OK, just d mu. OK, so this is just our final answer. And the sigma is given by that guy, OK? Uh, 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 capital sigma just given by that guy, OK? And so this is a manifest in the wrenching variant. And the manifest is symmetric on the 1 and 2, OK? Because sigma is obviously symmetric on the 1 and 2, OK? And uh, um, yeah. And this is a very beautiful formula, OK? Uh, you and well, we uh, went through a lot of trouble, uh, went through a lot of Vs and Ts. But, but in the end, we get a very beautiful answer. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So now let's consider some kinematic regimes of this formula. OK. So, so now let's talk about some kinematics of this formula. So, so it's convenient, so we have two particles, two initial particles. It's convenient to introduce the center of mass energy for the, um, for the, um, for the full system. So, so we can define something called S, small s. OK, this is not big S. So big S is reserved to action. So this is small s, p1 plus p2 squared. OK? So, so so P1 and the plus P2 is like the total momentum of your initial state. Of course, it's also total momentum of your final state, uh, 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 just from the momentum conservation. And then if I, uh, I look at P1 and P2 square, and then this is just essentially the invariant mass for your, uh, 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 for, uh, for your uh, full, uh, full system, OK? So, so this S is the so square root S. It's the invariant mass. It's the effective mass of the whole system. Yeah, of this, the, but when I say the whole system, I just mean the whole system of particle one, particle two, and also the final states. OK. okay. So we can also write this sigma. Turns out we can actually write sigma in terms of s, because the um, so uh, because p one dot p two can be written as one half. P1 plus P2 square minus P1 square minus P2 square. So this is just M square. So P1 square just minus M1 square. P2 square just minus M2 square. So this is just equal to minus 1 half, OK, S. Sorry, should be total. T S minus M1 square minus M2 square. OK, so, so P1, P2 squared just equal to minus S, OK? And then, 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 you, then the sigma just, then just can be expressed in terms of that, OK? So the sigma, so, so let me just write down the final expression for the sigma in terms of S just equal to square root 
S square, 2S, M1 square plus M2 square plus 1 square minus M2 square square. Okay, so so you so the so so this whole kinematic factor of sigma can be just expressed in terms of s. Okay. Good. Any questions on this? Okay. Good. So um. So now let's, uh, uh, another thing is that often we, uh, it's, yeah, even though this formula is, can be used in any frame, but sometimes, depending on your question, uh, the, uh, the expression is simpler in some frame than some other frame, okay? So, so one of the very frequently used frame is so-called the center of mass frame. called the center of mass frame. So in the center of mass frame, so the center of mass frame essentially the, uh, 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 is that in this frame that the, uh, the total center of mass of the system does not move, okay? So it means that the total momentum in the center of mass frame, total momentum, yeah, let me see, the total momentum equal to P1, P2 is taken to be zero, okay? So, so the whole part, uh, so the full system is not moving. And so that means we can take, so means that P1 equal to minus P2. So, so equal to, uh, 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 let's call it PCM. Okay, it just means the center of mass momentum, okay? And now you can, uh, you can find the PCM from, from just solving the, yeah, say, uh, you can also express the PCM in terms of the mass. It's because E1 plus E2 equal to square root S. Okay, so this is the total. So, so in the center of mass frame, the total momentum is zero, okay? Then, then that means that E1, E2, Okay, so, so here there's no, no spatial part contribution, and here just have E1 plus E2 square equal to S, okay? So E1 plus E2 equal to square root S, okay? And then you can actually solve for, the, uh, for P by plus M1 square plus M2 square, equal to square root S, okay? So you can now solve the uh, uh, center of mass in terms of S. So when you, s so this is a simple equation which you can solve, okay? Uh, so this is a, 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 a middle school equation, but turns out the result is very simple. Turns out the PCM, the magnitude, okay? When you solve this equation, you find that this is precisely equal to this sigma divided by square root s. Okay, so this is a very beautiful, simple formula. Okay. Given by sigma divided by square root s. Or in other words, the sigma can be written in terms of the center mass momentum magnitude times the square root s, okay? Times square root s. So now we can simplify that expression in center of mass frame. So in the center of mass frame,
now we have now we have in the central mass frame now we have the sigma is equal to so let me just save the yeah just you should assume that the, the subscript alpha to beta the mu and then divided by 4 center of mass momentum magnitude of center mass of momentum times square root s okay so we have a very simple formula. Okay. So the most of the time, for most question we are interested in, as you will see, uh, in next lecture. So most questions we are interested in actually corresponding to, to two scattering. So now let's specify uh, to, to, to two scatterings. So the final state only also uh, only contain two particles, okay? So, so in this case, we can simplify the d mu. Okay, further simplify d mu. So, so, so let's just write down the, uh, so in two to two scattering, essentially you have some particle come in, say P1, P2, and then you have two fellow particle, K1, K2. Okay, and then they intact, okay? They intact. So, so now let's write down this d mu explicitly for this case. Let's write down d mu explicitly for this case. So the d mu, just given by, so P1 plus P2 minus K1 minus K2, and then times D3 K1 divided by 2 pi cube, 2 K1 zero. Yeah, let's just call Q1 K0 E1 prime and the D3 K2, 2 pi cube, then 2 E2 prime, okay? So the, so the E1 prime and E2 prime, they are just energy for K1 and K2. So E1 prime equal to K1, zero, E2 prime. Okay. Yeah, for example, yeah, so, um, right. Yeah, so I will denote the, the mass for the two final particles, M1 prime and M2 prime, okay? So M1, M prime, two prime will be the mass of the two final particles, okay? So, so before simplify this uh, a, a little bit further, let us first introduce some notations, okay? So it's often convenient, so many of you may have already seen this before, often convenient to introduce the following quantities. So essentially they characterize all the Lorentz invariant quantities we can build up from, uh, uh, from K P, uh, P1, P2, K1, K2. Okay, so you can have so-called T is defined to be minus P1 minus K1 square, which is also the same from the momentum conservation, P2 minus K2 square. So U, minus P1 minus K2 square, the same. Minus P2 minus K1 square. So, 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 so let me just copy the S, okay. 
is P1, P2 square. So, so these are the quantities with the obvious Lorentz invariant. And they are the Lorentz invariant you can build up, Lorentz invariant quantities you can build up from, say, uh, P1, P2, K1, K2. Okay, so, uh, so oh, any Lorentz invariant quantities which you can build from those four momentum can be expressed in terms of uh, 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 some combinations of STU. In fact, STU themselves are not uh, independent of each other. There's only two independent of Lorentz invariants. With momentum conservation, there are only two uh, 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 independent of Lorentz invariants you can introduce. So, so S plus T and plus U is actually not independent of each other, you can show. So this, again, I give you the exercise for yourself. You can show that, okay? So if you load any of the two, then you load the S, uh, you load the, the other one, and any, uh, anything can be expressed in terms of this, uh, 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 this variable. Okay. Any questions? Yes? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, what do you mean? How do they? Oh yeah, yeah. Then your Feynman diagrams can be expressed. In, it can be conveniently expressed in terms of them. Yeah, as we will see in next lecture and in uh, in homework. Yeah, yeah. This uh, so this quantity will be uh, this quantity is Lorentz invariant. So that can be conveniently uh, expressed in terms of those quantities. Okay. So, so now, yeah, yeah, including the d mu, okay, d mu, uh, 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 yeah. So now let's further simplify d mu in the center of mass frame. Okay, so this quantity we can try to simplify it further. So we can. Okay, so, so now let's consider to do this in the center of mass frame. So in the center of mass frame, for 2 to 2 scattering is particularly simple because your incoming particle have the opposite momentum. Okay, so uh, one is PCM and one is, will be minus PCM, okay? And uh, 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 a spatial momentum. And then, then the final particle, they must also have opposite momentum, okay? Because the total uh, momentum, total spatial momentum in the central mass frame is zero, okay? So, so let's can call this uh, K cm, then this must be minus K cm, okay? Must be minus K cm, okay? So, so for simplicity, let's just call this K cm just K. Okay. So so uh, so now we can just uh, 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 now let's just with this in mind. Let's just look at this mu. Okay. Look at this mu. So um, so there are a few steps. So um, maybe we don't want to go through all the details of these steps. Um, Let me see, I think, uh, um, yeah, let me just outline some, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so I will not, yeah, try to only go through some of the uh, uh, steps, not to say doing all the steps, okay? So now in the center of mass frame, then you find this d mu can be written as, 
So first, that, 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 uh, this 2 pi falls, and then you have 2 factor of 2 pi cube, and then you cancel. So you have this 2 pi square. Then you have 4 e1 prime, e2 prime. And then you have various delta functions. OK, so you have k1, you have e1 prime plus e2 prime minus square root s times delta 3 k1 plus k2 and d3 k1 and d3 k2, OK? So as we said, the k3, uh, 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 they have to be equal and obvious to each other. And then you can just evaluate one delta function, and then the other uh, dk will remain, OK? The other dk will remain. So, so essentially, you just have, essentially, we can just forget about this, and then you just have dk. OK, you just have dk, OK? D3k. And this D3k, you can in turn write it as dk, uh, the magnitude of k and the k square, and then the center of mass, uh, sorry, the angle in the center of mass frame. OK, so, uh, so this k vector can be decomposed into the angular directions and uh, the magnitude. OK, and then, then now both e1 and e2 are expressed in terms of k square plus m1 prime square, and e2 prime equal to k square plus m2 prime square. OK? So now you can further evaluate this data function. Okay, now you can find, uh, uh, further evaluate this data function big, big, because of the e1 prime and e2 prime, they're just the functions of magnitude of k square. So you can evaluate this data function, uh, uh, you have decay uh, uh, over the magnitude of k here. Okay? So you can do that, uh, so I will not go into detail. Okay, I will not go into detail. And so, so when you do that, when you solve that delta function, okay, and then you find from here, then you find that the final answer is given by, okay, you find the final answer is given by very simple. You find given by k cm divided by 14 pi square, square root s d omega center of mass, okay? And this KCM is defined to be the solution of this equation. So, the, so KCM is the solution to E1 prime plus E2 prime equal to square root of S, okay? So again, this is expressed in terms of the uh, S. Okay, so yeah, uh, so through some, yeah, just technically just evaluate this data function and uh, yeah, okay, yes? So are we like, when we calculate this coefficient, are we, are we integrating over all the basis outliers and just evaluate all these stuff? Yeah, so, so you only evaluate the k around the, the momentum shell, right? So, uh, so you can evaluate the data function because we always have a finite range of k to integrate over. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter how wide the range of this, because the uh, because the non-zero value of d mu is always around the those satisfy the momentum uh, conservation. Yeah. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Yeah. Here I didn't write. Yeah, I think it, you may wonder. Here I didn't write the integral sign. How can I just evaluate the delta function? Okay, you can, uh, the reason you, uh, you can evaluate that, that function is just no matter what is the range of dk you integrate over, uh, uh, you always, uh, will always uh, evaluate around those data functions, okay? And so you can always uh, 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 take care of them. Yeah. Okay, so now if you combine this result, 
And this result, and now we can write a, 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 a simple expression for d sigma in the, in the center of mass frame, okay? So, so if you combine them together, then we find d sigma, d omega center of ma mass frame is equal to m alpha beta square divided by 16, 64 pi square s and kcm divided by pcm, okay? And the KCM is the solution to this equation. And the PCM is the solution to this equation. So the PCM is the equation to this equation. Okay, so they are given by the same equation, just you replace the M1, M2 by M1 prime, the M2 prime. Okay, so this is the final answer for the differential cross section for two to two scattering in the center of mass frame. Okay in the center of mass frame. And so this is the expression which you will, uh, we will use later for, uh, 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 for certain, yeah. Uh, um. You have any questions? Okay, good. So this concludes the discussion of the cross section, okay? So it's finally over. <laughs> <laughs> it's very over, uh, <laughs> but we have to go through this because this is the kind of things which we uh, we compare with experiments. Okay, and in particular, if you calculate the total cross section, and then you can just integrate this over all the solid angle. Okay. So before now talking about the physical process, there's one more thing we need to consider. So here we consider the initial state to be one to be two particles because we say we don't normally do scattering with more than two particles. But there's a lot of situation which still often could uh, 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 happen. Okay, so this is the situation which initial state only have one particle. So when your initial st state only have one particle, what do you have? Yeah, then that goes one into k. Yeah, so we, we can still have the situation if you have an unstable particle, then we can decay. And then it's very important for many, uh, in many physical situations to calculate the decay rate, okay? So, so, now, so now we have P1, Say so suppose this is the initial momentum and decay into k1 plus kn, say final n particles, okay? So now the, uh, the initial state only one particle and the final state is still k1, kn, okay? Alpha, so, so beta remain the same, but alpha only one particle, okay? And the decay rate is much simpler to define, it's just dr, dp, alpha, beta, dt, okay? And we don't need to divide by flux, all those things, okay? So, so then, now let me explain a little bit. Uh, again, this dp, alpha, beta, we always mean we mean that the probability of p1 decaying into n fellow particles with, again, particle one with, yeah, with range with the dk1 around k1 and the dk2 around k2, etc. okay, and dkn around kn. 
So, so, so when we write the alpha beta, you should imagine this. Uh, uh, we already include that. Okay. So, so now we can just repeat what we did before. So then, this dp alpha beta dt dp alpha beta then just given by again. Okay, this thing square, beta plus infinity square, and alpha minus infinity square divided by beta and alpha. Okay? And times j from 1 to n, d3 kj, q5 cube times v. Okay? So now it's the same thing, okay? Now, uh, now it's same thing. So, so, so the only thing you need to and the, and the alpha one say is you, uh, 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 everything else is the same, okay? So everything else is the same. So you just repeat our previous analysis, which I will not repeat. So the only thing different is just now the initial state is just two uh, uh, a single energy, okay? So you just repeat the whole thing. And then you find, okay, so I will not the, then you find d gamma alpha beta equal to dp alpha beta divided by t. And then you find that this is just given by qe1 alpha beta square d mu. Okay, d mu is defined in the same way. Okay, the mu is defined the same way. Okay, so so this is the final answer for the uh, for the decay case, and the total decay rate would be you integrate just over all momentum. Okay. So the total decay rate. So the total decay rate is just gamma total rate, then gamma is you summing over all possible choice of beta, and then you integrate over all momentum. Okay. And the lifetime of the particle. Tau is just equal to one over gamma. Okay. So one thing, one difference with the cross action case. So the cross action we mentioned before, say it's Lorentz invariant, but decay rate is not, and decay rate does depend on the frame of the particle. Okay, does depend on the frame of the particle. So uh, uh, so decay rate, yeah. So this lifetime. Does depend on the uh, 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 the frame of the particle. In the right frame of the particle, because one into just e one equal to m one. Okay, just equal to mass of the particle. Okay, and so the right frame decay rate. Is the smallest among all possible decay rate. Okay, because of the time dilation. Okay, that the uh, uh, in the yeah yeah uh, in all other moving frame because the time dilate uh, time dilation the decay rate become faster. Okay, so that's what you then to that the uh, 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 particles are moving uh, and they have a longer lifetime. Okay, they have a longer lifetime. So this. Makes perfect sense. Okay. So, any questions on this? Yes. 
Huh? Is beta a finite set like that? Yeah, in general, in general, uh, uh, for the real, you level low, but, but uh, uh, yeah, beta is what we discover, right? Yeah, we observe what are the decay fellow product. Yeah, but you can also predict from your theory what are the possible decay. But in real experiment, there are always maybe some particle we don't know. Yeah, there may be some, yeah, some hidden interactions. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, good. Good, so that finally concludes this discussion of the cross-section and the decay rate, okay. And now we can study some, some process. So we only have uh, like 10 minutes to do it. So we will not really be able to do it just maybe to start it, okay. So, um, so in general, we will consider two to two scatterings, okay? Okay, in general, we consider two to two scatterings. And uh, so, so one remark to make, and in that case, we have this formula, okay? We have this very nice formula, okay? So, for particles, we spin, okay? Say whether spin one half or spin one, spin one half would be electrons, protons, et cetera and spin one will be photon. And the scattering amplitude, then will depend on the polarization. Of initial and fellow particles. Okay, so in most experiments, in most experiments, so the, the initial beam, they are unpolarized. Okay, it's not easy uh, uh, sometimes to do the polarized beam. So initial state, initial beams, unpolarized. Unpolarized means that just corresponding to a superposition of all possible kind of uh, polarizations, okay? Incoherent superposition. And then the final state and the spin polarization of final state Normally, it cannot be detected. Okay, it's, it's a difficult question to detect the polarization of a particle, okay? And uh, actually, it's not even, say, if you say observe a new particle, it's not even easy to, uh, to tell whether this particle is a boson or fermion, okay? So, so to, to measure the specific polarization is even harder, okay? Anyway, so, so, uh, uh, so the polarization of fellow, partic uh, fellow state are normally uh, are not detected. So in this case, when we compare this experiment, so when we calculate this kind of cross action, compare with uh, experiment, we should, That means that we should to compare this experiment 
we should sum over should sum over polarizations of final states and the uh, average average over polarizations of initial state okay so 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 in one for the final state we need to sum over them because we need to sum over all possibilities but for the initial state all different polarizations contribute, so we need to average over them. Okay, we need to average over them. So, so for example, so for example, if we consider such a process, so very important process. Say uh, in QED is your violation of particles. So if you have a particle and an uh, antiparticle, then they can annihilate. When they annihilate, then they uh, annihilate into photon, and then the photon can split into some other particle and uh, antiparticle. Okay, so this is the process of particle A come in. Okay, so this is A. A bar, this is B, and B bar. Okay, so this is the production, uh, the pair creation of B and B bar from colliding A and its antiparticle. Okay, so in real life, in real life, by colliding, say for example, electron plus positron, then you can create many particles. So this is the one of the uh, 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 most important way to discover new particles. Okay, many new particles are discovered this way. You just collide the electron and the positron, and then you will be able to uh, create new particles. Okay, for example, you can create muon and uh, uh, anti-muon, and then you can create quarks and anti-quark. Okay, create quark and anti-quark, et cetera. Okay. So, so for such a, so suppose, so, so in all these case, both initial and final particles, they are, they are, they are fermions. So you need to specify their polarization. So uh, this one, suppose we have P1, R1. So here we have P2. Say, say the, uh, since this is antiparticle, let's call it R2 bar. And B would be called, say this is K1, S1. Say this is K2, S2 bar, okay? And then for the unpolarized process, yeah, let me just write down one, formula, uh, one last formula. So you need to say, suppose the scattering amplitude is M, Square, okay, so M, and then we need to, for unpolarized process, so we need to consider, we need to average initial spin, R1, and average over the final, uh, uh, the, uh, the R2, okay, and then we need to sum over S1, and sum over S2, Okay, and then I have M squared. Okay, so essentially this becomes one over four and you sum over all possible spin polarizations of the M squared. Okay, so this is the one we can say compare with experiments. Okay, so next time we will, uh, we will write this down explicitly uh, 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 for this kind of process. Okay, and uh, yeah, yeah so, uh, so let's stop here.